Okay, good evening or good night everyone and welcome to another video by Solid Shell Security. Uh, this is actually a little random video that uh, I've decided to put together that might be of some help to some of you uh, website developers and server administrators. We actually had a business come to us and they had a problem with one of the websites and it was a pretty random issue actually because it actually would work, but we eventually found out that users or clients for this matter that were running Windows 8 or had IE 10 had a lot of issues because the website wouldn't load, it wouldn't work correctly. So we did some digging and we found out that it actually was an issue, not so much with Win, uh, IE 10, but it was actually an issue with Microsoft's .NET platform and because the business had an ASP.NET website uh, back-ended with a C Sharp, we had to actually do some debugging and actually try to figure out why it broke because it was working fine, it was running fine. So eventually we traced the issue down to an issue with the definitions for .NET where it wasn't actually recognizing the browser IE 10 because all the other browsers worked fine so it was a Microsoft bug, go figure where their products were not communicating correctly, go figure again so .NET was basically saying oh well that's not, like, not a real browser so I don't have to write the postback command which was a JavaScript function so when the clients were actually inputting their data and they were clicking submit, it was just, it was going to air out. They didn't know what to do, so the business was getting phone calls like all the time, crazy, and they were practically just coming to us begging for help. And so eventually we, we weren't, we burned through the night, we discovered what the issue was, and we eventually found this as the problem. And this was definitely it. Uh, ASP.NET fails to detect, i.e., causing the the post back to the JavaScript bears and it wasn't doing it correctly. Uh, we didn't have the we haven't seen this issue yet, but we did find this to be completely true. So this video is just to help you guys out if you discover that you have this problem. Now the reason why this is such a big issue is because people don't have automatic updates, people don't update their machines. Um, Windows boxes don't come shipped with updates and you know let's just face it people don't update so this is you know why what we do is when we have clients come to us or basically bring in new clients I know it's a little off topic one of the first things we do when we bring them into our maintenance or management server, whether it be a home user or a business, we start maintaining their systems, we start getting automatic updates done, we update their systems, so they don't typically have these issues. Now, because a lot of users are now getting Windows 8 and using IE 10 because Microsoft is making this push for IE 10, we're seeing this issue pop up and we're having to fix uh, a lot of business websites. Uh, what we eventually did was we did the site only fixes and this was actually a fairly simple thing to do really uh, to get the system to work actually so what we did was um, we were using .NET uh, 2 and what we wanted to do is uh, this is just a test website that we have going uh, one of the things that we did do because we really didn't have like all the stars to go we really didn't have everything like the 37 gigabit, gigabyte, whatever uh, database, local, and we really couldn't connect to it due to the security settings that are in place and all. So we had to actually, uh, we only had access to FTP. So what I'm trying to say here is, you really don't have to establish a connection to the web server or anything. You just need FTP. Uh, you actually could pretty much just load up a website and just follow these steps, and then just FTP the the files needed. So what we want to do is uh, give me a second here to find my way around. Um, have to have a little uh, issues here. I've had a lot of applications running on this box uh, tonight. So it's I've had Visual Studio like all up in the swap. So it's a you know how it goes with laptops and the slow drives that 
come with medieval. Okay, tools. My bad. Okay, we want to go to tools. We want to go to um the package manager. Package manager console. Let that come up. And on a little side note, I recommend if you can use a laptop, um, definitely invest in SSDs and at least eight gigabytes of RAM, especially when you're like an extremely big power user, such as myself. Okay, so right, just initially uh, initializing that, what we want to do is go ahead and copy and paste this, just quick and simple, and go ahead and paste it in here. And then just hit enter. What it's going to do is it's going to just download and install the the app update. As you can see in the top right, we have app code, app data. What it's going to do is it's going to install app underscore browser, and it's also going to update the packages.config. Now in our case, we didn't have a packages config, so it automatically created all that. But what you want to end up doing is you just want to FTP you know into into the web server and upload the the app folder and the packages file and everything will just update automatically. You know you just upload it and the issue goes away. We haven't had any issues. We were testing it uh, with uh, Windows Server 2012 with IE10. We didn't have any issues when we did have issues. So we can in fact confirm that it does in fact fix everything. Uh, so, it's definitely an interesting one. Uh, they do have some hot fixes, but by now, since this is like an old thing, it you really shouldn't have any issues. I mean, you cannot manually do this if you want to. I mean, it's I mean, it's basically you copy this in, and then you just have to make sure if you don't, or actually, you have to make sure you also copy in the packages config file. Um, but really, there's not much to it. It's pretty simple. So as you can see, it installed it. We have the uh, IE browser file here. So let's see if we can get this thing to respond and open. Um, I'm gonna make sure in my next videos I load these applications. Uh, yep. Definitely want to make sure we get these things preloaded before we do anything. Apparently, for our gigabytes of RAM for a laptop that runs multiple gigabyte programs isn't big enough so anyway uh, that's basically it I mean if we can just get this thing open I'm just going to show you there's really nothing much in this I mean this is basically it I mean it's pretty much just got compatibilities its names its values I mean there's really nothing much to this it's just really configuring everything so um, we haven't actually played with this much, but as far, for, uh, but as far as we can tell, it's actually pretty stable. And you actually might want to do some research and consider maybe using stuff like this, you know, just to have more control um, for when you actually start producing websites and all these new browsers are always changing and we have lots of compatibility issues. So you actually might want to actually consider keeping this and actually looking into it, maybe using it for your other projects, but um, really that's about it. So there's really nothing to it. You just, just have to up, uh, FTP up the files, but we did that. We've got the business's websites up and running, so they're happy again. And if you have like your own website or you have a business or something, and you have like an ASP.NET website or something that's running.NET, you might want to consider implementing this site-wide just because you really have no control over um, what the local browser definitions are. I mean, this is not one of the most easiest things to find, so if you find, happen to have this, you can pretty much instantly debug it and fix it, but yeah, so. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Be sure to subscribe, like us, follow us, stalk us, um, give us catnip, give us a kitten to play with. We all like kittens, right? So, yeah. Okay, so, good night, everyone. Sleep well, and join us for the next video.